Hey guys, it's Jess from Peace Love Books, and today I'm here with my January wrap-up. I have had a great month. I think that, like, the fire from the beginning of the year was, like, lit under me, that I was like, I want to read all the books, everything I can get my hands on, and I read 17 books this month. Um, I listened to two audiobooks, and I actually finished two books today. It's February 1st. I finished listening to an audiobook. It was really short. It was only six hours, so it took me about three hours because I listened to it on double time speed. And I finished another book, so I'm only going to share with you that one other book, not the audiobook I listened to. So I actually have 18 books to share with you. I know. Like, I'm crazy. I have no idea how I read this much this month, except for the fact that I've had five snow days now. Six. I think I've had six snow days now this month alone, including today. I had Wednesday off. Thursday off and today's Friday and we had snow. So Wednesday and Thursday it was super cold. It was a polar vortex. It was like if you're outside for more than five minutes you're gonna get frostbite. So I literally did not leave the house until from Wednesday and Thursday until Thursday evening when I went to the gym. And today it jumped like three inches of snow overnight so we didn't have school. So I've been reading a lot and I have a lot to share with you so I'm just gonna go ahead and get to it. The first book I finished, I think I shared it with you guys last wrap up. I don't remember if I did though because this was the first book I ended up finishing but it was my pick what I read next for December. And that's The Wrath of the Dawn by Renee Adgay. I don't remember if I shared it with you or not. If I did, I apologize. I'll just do this real quick. I gave it a two out of five stars. It's about a girl who, it's based on like the folk tale of something. I don't remember. So the prince take or king it takes on a new wife every night and kills her by morning time. And so this main character was really mad because her best friend was taken and killed and so she volunteers to go and he doesn't kill her after the first night. Um, the writing was like really hard for me to get into. I did not buy the romance whatsoever and people tell me this isn't a romance but it's definitely centered around the romance aspect of the storyline. Like the whole plot centers around the romance. So I didn't buy it. The writing, I like I said, was super hard to get into. I had to like reread a lot of sections over again just to figure out something that actually happened. Like I think at one point someone tried to kill someone and I was like, did that happen? And I reread it three times to figure it out. So didn't really like this. Two out of five stars. The next book I read was on audio and that is Tapping the Billionaire by Max Monroe. This is book one in the Billionaire series, I believe. I binge listened to two other Max Monroe books last no, five? Four. Four of them last month. I listened to three in her, their doctor, I think it's a duo of authors, three in their doctor series and one of their football ones and then this one and I'm obsessed. This is an office romance and the main character is a billionaire. He owns this like dating app thing and she works in his office and it's their romance. It was super cute. I gave it a four to five stars. I really enjoyed it. I couldn't get enough of listening to it. There are certain characters from other book series that show up like I believe from the um I don't know if it's the Wildcat series. It's their football romance series show up in this one. But it was really cute. I love listening to the audio and I would definitely recommend it. The next book I read this month was Lover Enshrined by J.R. Ward. This is Fury's story and I was very skeptical going in because nobody likes Fury or his book, really. People don't like his book. And I see why people didn't like it because it was definitely not romance centered like all the other ones where there were a lot of other plot lines that kind of overshadowed the romance and I still love the romance. I gave us a 5 out of 5 stars, so I still can't put this series down. This is book 6 in the Black Dagger Brotherhood series. If you didn't know, they're vampire romances. I'm going to try to finish the series before April. We'll see if that happens, but I still really enjoyed this. I think that a lot went on, but I loved everything going on, especially with John Matthews' storyline, and there was a lot going on with the lessers and just like stuff going on. Fury is definitely not my favorite of the brothers whatsoever. He's probably my least favorite, especially how he acted in this book. Um, he kind of get went a little like psychotic at some points, like creepy wise. Um, but he was just dealing with some stuff, but I really liked his love interest and I'm interested to see what happens next in the series. I give it a 5 out of 5 stars. The next book I read was for my book club at school that I have with some kids and that is Cinder by Marissa Meyer. I read this book so long ago that I don't even remember a single thing that happens. I didn't remember the, the plot twist that happened in here. It is about a girl named Cinder who is a part cyborg and it's a dystopian society fantasy society, sci-fi society, I don't even know what to call it, but she um, ends up being hired by the prince to fix a android robot thing because she is a mechanic. And so it was really good. I was like flying through the book. I 
really enjoyed it. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. It wasn't like the uh, most amazing thing ever. Like, people are obsessed with this series. I'm pretty sure it does get better than this. But I'm really happy that I was able to reread it because I did like the surprises that were thrown out there. Some of them were a little bit obvious, but... Some weren't, and so I was shocked with some parts, and I really liked the Cinderella retelling aspect because I liked the similarities between Cinderella and Cinder, so four to five stars, pretty good. The next book I listened to on audio, and that was Wildcat by Max Monroe. I thought I read this in December, but I guess it was this month. I got a puppy in here with me. Hi, Lily. Hi. She wants something. I don't know what she wants. But this is a football romance, and it is about the quarterback. His name's like Quinn Bailey, so his initials are QB. And he falls in love with a flight attendant, and this is such a cute romance. They were adorable together. I loved how nice of a guy he was. He was just so sweet and worthy. He would go out of his way to uh, court his love interest. I forget what her name is, but like when he wanted to get her attention, he would like do stuff. Really sweet. She was hesitant because he is in the spotlight, and there are some race issues she's thrown in the mix too because I believe she's African American. I don't quite remember what her race was. I know she was mixed race and there was some talk about it, especially from the media when they figured out they were dating. So I really enjoyed this. Gave it a four to five stars. Really cute. I do think Quinn was like a little bit too um, perfect, but I really enjoyed it. The next book I read was my first book for Romanceopoly. It was for The Dungeon, which was read about someone who is in prison or used to be in prison. So I finally picked up A Pound of Flesh. This one is about a woman whose dad was brutally murdered in front of her. And so she has always wanted to be a teacher and she has gotten a job working in a prison. Um, with people like the the people who murdered her father. So she uh, is definitely trying to test herself and trying to make a difference in people's lives. And she is instantly intrigued by this guy, Wes, who is very dangerous and doesn't want any help from anybody, but he has a chance of getting parole. And so she goes out of her way to try to help him no matter how much he's kind of pushed her away. And so he finally gets parole and he gets out of prison and she agrees to keep on teaching him. And there is like insane chemistry between them. I could not put this book down. I I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. It was so good and it read so quickly and it was a great romance. I loved how kind of angsty it was because it's kind of like a not forbidden but like she feels like she should not like this guy who's an ex-con and who was a con when they met. I really like this. I really want to read the next book and I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. The next book I read was also for Romanceopoly and that was Bad Boy Circus and it's read about a bad boy so I finally read Reaper's Property by Joanna Wilde. I have a review all about this book. I'll link it down below and this one's about a motorcycle gang and this girl is just out of a really awful relationship and she moves in with her brother. Her brother is friends with bikers so she's kind of gotten to know them. She's kind of flirting with this guy named Horse and then her brother kind of like double crosses them and they catch it and so they are gonna kill him and instead of killing him they decide to take her uh, to be Horse's like live-in girlfriend but not old lady because she does not deserve that title. And so it was really good. I loved being back in the motorcycle romance world. I want to read so many more right now. I'm like craving them and I gave us a four to five stars though because the timing was really weird. There was like a jump of months like later on when we stayed in the same kind of timeline in the beginning because it kept on flashing from the present to the past and how the past got to the present and then it kind of skipped over, if that makes sense. The timing was a bit weird, but I still loved it. If you're new to motorcycle romances, you probably will enjoy it as well. Definitely recommend. The next book I read was a reread because the book three comes out this month and that is Corrupt by Penelope Douglas. You guys have heard me talk about this like a million times. This is the first time I'm rereading this and I loved it just as much as the first time. I gave it a five out of five stars. It is about Rika who in the past was dating someone and then got into it with these four boys who are like best friends who kind of run the town and they wreck havoc on Devil's Night and now you flash forward five years and they want revenge on her and she doesn't know why and it's her and Michael's romance. One of my favorite dark romances ever and I'm excited to reread um well, I never hide away. I never remember the second book before Kill Switch comes out. The next book I read starts my slew of twin books. So I read four twin books in a row. I'm a twin, so like that kind of freaked me out, but you know, whatever. I first read Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno because of Chelsea Dolling reads. Um, Chelsea 
obsesses with this book. If you watch her channel, you know, and every time you look at this book, you think of her. This one is magical realism, and so it's about twins who live in this town where there's this magical bird that shows up every summer, and so, like, these bird heads, the people who are obsessed with the bird, come to their town each summer, and they live in an inn with their mom, and so it's very central to their economy of where they live, and it has not shown up yet this summer, and so the main character actually does not show any powers, and her sister Mary has been able to float since they were little, and so she's kind of dealing with the reality that she might not get her powers, and she is leaving at the end of the summer for college, and she's never been off the island. This book blew me away. The writing was just so magical and lyrical and amazing, and like, I was so shocked by how entrancing just the writing was, and I loved the magical realism aspect because like everything was normal, but it wasn't, but it felt normal, which is like the whole point of magical realism, so I loved that. And this took a turn that I was not expecting, and I loved the message it was sending at the end. That's all I can say. I give it a 5 out of 5 stars. Definitely recommend reading. It's a very quick read, but it was really good. The next book I read was 99% Mine by Sally Thorne. This was sent to me from Rolly and Amaro, so thank you so much to them for sending this book my way. This is about Darcy, who is a twin with her brother, and their childhood best friend has come to help work on restoring her grandmother's house, because her grandmother passed away and left them money to restore it, her and her brother to restore it, and their best friend recently started his own construction company, and so Tom is the guy, and he is just the swooniest man ever. I give this a 5 out of 5 stars. This is definitely nothing like The Hating Game, so if you go in expecting The Hating Game, you're gonna hate it. Darcy is definitely a very spunky, different character. She's always been traveling around the world and doesn't really like to be home and she's not really reliable and that's her kind of character. She's a bartender and she falls for Tom and she's been falling for Tom for a while, but Tom is like off limits because it's her brother's best best friend and she just wants him to be fully hers and not only half hers and it's adorable. I love Tom. He's one of my new favorite book boyfriends. I gave us a 5 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed it. I know some people don't like it but I thought it was great. The next book I read was my next twin book and that was The Cruel Prince by Holly Black and yes I have the beautiful Barnes & Noble special edition that I could not find anywhere. A lovely follower, Catherine Marie I believe is what her name is, said she had an extra copy and she was gonna get rid of it and sent it my way and I am still like in awe of this book it is so pretty and like look at that do you see that like shiny crown on there and it's just gorgeous and it's black and so beautiful and I like it so much better than the white cover like it just pops against it and it's gonna look so good next to the Wicked King and this one I have a review all for this I'll link it down below gave it a five out of five stars it's fantasy about Faye about a human living in the Faye world and there's a lot of political conspiracies going on but not too political and there's a little bit of a romance that should get better in book two I loved it gave it a five out of five stars our main character does have a twin sister in this book the last twin book I read of this month was Work in Progress by Stacey Hart. I wasn't going to originally sign up for the e-arc of this because I try to be very selective of my e-arcs and I'm not like a diehard Stacey Hart fan. I've enjoyed her books, but I saw rave reviews for this before it came out, so I decided to sign up for the arc, got it, and it was so adorable. Amelia is actually a blogger, and she's working for a newspaper, and she's very, very introverted. She has a lot of anxiety, social anxiety, and so the book starts out with her trying to do, like, the exposure therapy, and she is going to a book signing for this hotshot author, thank you, words, and she like doesn't despise his books but like rips them to shreds in her reviews because she sees everything wrong with them and she introduces herself and he's like you're the girl that hates my books and he immediately asks her to work with him to make his next book good to be a beta reader I guess and tell him the places he goes wrong before he actually publishes it and now she is like freaking out and she says okay and they grow closer and she gets a really comfortable with him and then he has to fix his image so they decide to get married to fix his image for a year and so it is a marriage of convenience it is a very quiet shy girl who learns to come out of her shell it's a writing romance I really enjoyed it the main character guy his name's Tommy and he has a twin brother and his twin brother is kind of in this book 
loved his character and I'm pretty sure he gets the next book. And this one though was super cute. I will say the ending and the conflict that came up made me really annoyed because it's one of my pet peeves of tropes that I really don't like. So I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars because I saw it coming and I was like please don't make that the drama that's going to unfold and ruin their relationship and give them obstacles and it was. And so I gave it 4 out of 5 stars but it's super cute and if you love a good author, reader, romance, you need to pick this up. The next book I read was Falling for the Wrong Brother by Michelle May. This is for a video I did with Harlequin Romance, which I will link down below, of some of my favorite literary couples. This one is about a girl named Maggie, and she is the mayor of her small town, and she runs away from the altar with her fiancé because something bad happened, and she kind of takes the fall for breaking up their marriage or their, like, engagement, and she ends up falling into the arms of Griffin, who, like, leads her away from the wedding ceremony, like, giving her a way out, and that is actually the brother of her former fiance and it's their romance and it was really cute. I really enjoyed it. It was just a cute adorable romance. Even a four to five stars. I went through it in a day. It's super quick but I just gobbled it up and I just can't get over the fact that it was a cute romance. It was a small town romance and it was kind of like a not really hate to love but like they didn't like each other and then they started liking each other and I liked it a lot. The next book I listened to on audio and that is Pick Six by Max Monroe. This is book two in the series of her I don't know what Maverick series. Maybe it's the football romances and that like I said it's a Duo author. This one is about Sean, who is the cocky, arrogant football player, as cocky as they get. And Six actually is a vlogger, and so they had a made up platform she used, but it's basically like YouTube, where she vlogs daily content, and she is hired by the Mavericks to cover their games and their team. And so she vlogs her experience being with the team, and she falls for Sean. And at first, it's more of a friends with benefits because they can't really, she can't take Sean seriously at all. And Sean is pretty much a playboy to the T. And they start developing real feelings, and it was so much fun. I love Six's character. I still gave it a four to five stars. It wasn't like mind-blowing, but it was just a, such a cute, fun romance, especially if you like football romances of the adult variety, like professional football. So much fun. Really recommend this series. Only four more books to go, and this video is going to be really, really long. But the next book I read was The Matchmaker's List by Sonia Lolly. I think that's her name. Yes. And so this one I was really excited for because it is a diverse romance. She is actually Canadian Indian. I thought she was an Indian American, but she lives in Canada. And so she is 29 and she's going to turn 30 soon and her grandmother is determined to find her a nice Indian boy to marry because she needs to marry. All of her friends are getting married um, and it's about time she got married in their culture and so her grandmother pushing Indian boy after Indian boy at her and she is sick and tired of it and she is feelings for her ex that are coming through and she doesn't think she's over him. And so this one, going into it, I had recently read a review that tore it apart. Someone on Instagram posted how problematic this book was and how they hated it, and I'm just gonna go out and say the problematic aspect it's, it's a spoiler, but I just want to let you know in case you have a problem with it. She pretends to be a lesbian to get her grandmother off her back. The books do this. I don't myself know if that is harmful because I am not of that group of people, but reading it, I ended up giving it a 3 out of 5 stars because that aspect was really annoying to me because she knew she was hurting people when she was lying. It caused a huge rift between her family and her family's friends because a lot of people didn't agree with that lifestyle and so they hated her for it and she wasn't even gay and so I can see why that can be problematic. Other than that, I could not really connect with this main character. She was really annoying to me. I couldn't get why she liked her ex-boyfriend at all and she like put everything on the line for him and she was obsessed with him and like her life revolved around him. It reminded me a lot of the romance between Jasper and Iris from The Holiday, the movie, or of Bridget Jones and Hugh Grant's character. I'm blanking on his name, from Bridget Jones, like, it's he's a really awful guy, and he doesn't really give you the time of day, but he wants you when he needs you, and so I did not get her relationship with him, and then it, like, was annoying when, like, a new relationship sprung up. That's all I'm gonna say. So, I gave it a three to five stars. I didn't love it, and I wasn't really into the characters, and it's probably on the really low three side part, so just know that spoiler going in as well, just to warn you in case you are offended by it. The next book I finally read was Vicious by LJ Shen. I know you guys are like, finally, you're reading this book, and it's because I read the novella that takes place before this, and I didn't like it, and so I've been dragging my feet to read this. I really enjoyed it. I had an ebook of it, and it is about Vicious and Amelia. Amelia's family are work on 
Vicious is property. They live in like the servants quarters, but they're not servants They're just like the help and vicious from day one despises her. He calls her the help He makes everybody at school hate her and it does start out when they're in high school And he's like an extreme bully so it gave me bully by Penelope Douglas vibes, but then it flashes forward to Ten years later five years later five years later five years later and she's working in New York with her sister and she runs into him while she's a waitress and then he hires her to be his secret like secretary like personal assistant and it goes from there and so it's their romance it's a very hate to love a very angsty very angry romance and vicious was super mean to her when they were in high school and it flashes continues to flash back and forth between the past and the present kind of like corrupt vibes to figure out like what he did that was so bad and what broke her up from dating his best friend and i really enjoyed it i give it a four to five stars i did kind of drag through the beginning because i was reading it at the gym and i wasn't like really like loving getting back into it but once the Got about the halfway mark. I really enjoyed it. So I gave it a four out of five stars. Definitely recommend if you like angsty, like bully books by Penelope Douglas. The last official book I read in January was Sugar Daddy by Sawyer Bennett. I listened to this on audio and it was a very short one. It was about six and a half hours long, which typically the ones I listen to are about like 10 hours long. And so I flew through it and I will say the beginning was very shocking. It begins on a rape scene. And so I was very uncomfortable while I was listening to it. Typically, I wish I had read this at paperback or ebook because then I could skim through it and not like focus on it so much but you can't really like do that when you're listening to someone reading it and so it was really hard to get through the opening scene but this book is about Sila who is raped when she's 16 and it flashes for 10 years and she identifies her rapist in an ad on the TV and so she realizes he is the co-owner of Sugar Bowl which is a website hooking up young women with sugar daddies and so she decides she wants to infiltrate the Sugar Bowl website as a sugar baby to try to get close to the owner and kill him. So that's this book and it shocked me. It blew me away. I didn't read the synopsis. I just saw some of my friends really liked it so I decided to listen to it because it was on script. I really enjoyed it. I gave it a four out of five stars and I just listened to the second book today. I like could not put it down. It was so good. They end on cliffhangers, both books one and two do, and they're so good, and it makes you want to jump right into the next book. They're definitely more suspense, romance suspense, but really good romances because she does fall for someone. They do deal with very dark matter, so keep that in mind. The last book I read, I actually finished this morning, but I'm going to talk about it today because I just can't not, and that is Rhapsodic, Rhapsodic, I don't know how to say that, by Laura Thalassa. This book blew me away. This is a fantasy romance, and I had never heard of it except for some of my friends started talking about it, and she's going to a polycon, so I was like, I guess I'll pick it up. This reminded me a lot of The Cruel Prince, but for adults. This is about a girl who is a siren, actually, and so she meets the bargainer when she is 16 and she get makes deals with him and every deal she makes she has to pay him back and so she ends up having this huge bracelet with over 300 beads on it representing every deal she's made that she owes him and so we flash between her when she's 16 and seven years later when she is working as a private investigator and using her powers because she can control men with her voice she can control humans with her voice and so the bargainer ends up showing up after seven years of not being there they kind of had a romance when she was 16 and but she was like young and naive and liked him and now it is like flame and hot romance and he's actually part of the Fae. That's all I want to say about that, but definitely there's a huge mystery that's involved and they're rekindling their romance and he is definitely a bad boy and angry and like testing her and pushing her and it was amazing. If you love fantasy, if you love a good romantic fantasy, you would love this book. I loved it and I cannot wait to read more from the series. I gave it a five to five stars. And those are all the books that I read in January. I know it was a ton and my video stopped recording twice because I was recording for too long, but I will edit this soon and hopefully have it up by Saturday so I hope you it's Saturday when you're watching this let me know down below what you read this month and what you loved I would love to hear as always thank you so much for watching and have a good day bye